Hey y'all, this is Amok, Madam Hexa, and Caitlin Case, and this is Trouble Comes in Three. This podcast discusses scandalous topics like communication, sexual health, BDSM, and more. If you are under 18, please leave us and visit scarletteen.com. If you're over 18, let's get naughty. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I didn't have anyone anything for that one, guys. Yeah, that's fine. You know, we don't need a joke every time because we gotta keep it spicy. Every once in a while, we'll just hit it when they least expect it. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are we talking about tonight, Kate? Um, we are talking about um something that came up during the live stream that we had, our most recent live stream, about public spaces, the experience of playing publicly and kind of how it's different from playing privately. And so we just kind of thought uh, we'd kind of run with that this evening and expand upon that. So get the juicy bits out. <laughs> literally. Oh, literally, yeah. <laughs> Put your juicy bits on display. So we talked about this isn't going to be like a historically specific description of the growth of public and private spaces. This is more just going to be our experience, our, you know, suggestions and things like that. Just Pre so preferences. Yeah. yeah. We'll do, we'll do an episode later on about kind of both queer and, you know, BDSM spaces like through the decades and what's kind of happening to them currently which is kind of a backwards trend that we're not all a fan of. Um, but that, that we'll, have the, we'll have the historical details in that episode, I think. In the mid-early 20th century, there weren't a lot of, like, public, quote, spaces. Um, there were private house parties that we got to enjoy and play at, mm -hmm. and there were private clubs. Right. But, like, when I say private club, I mean, like, if like you didn't know secret, somebody who secret. knew somebody, you weren't even going to know that the club existed, much less how to get to it or get in. Right. It's not going to be in a fucking phone booth. <laughs> right. Um, and that was for protection. Yeah. You know, it was illegal to be gay. It was, you know, what we do is generally not the most legal thing. True. In a lot of spaces. True, true. Um, but anything as, radical was kind of uh, on the radar of the feds, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great time. <laughs> but since the early, <laughs> the early part of that century. <laughs> Magnus, shut up. <laughs> uh, we are doing tonight's recording remotely because I was sick. But that apparently means that the animals are all extra loud. <laughs> extra loud because they can hear each other and they don't shush you. Um, now I've lost my train of thought. Thanks, Magnus. Moby will help. Hold on. Once play spaces kind of became less of like this dirty little secret in the sense of it was dangerous to be found out and it was highly illegal to be found out you started to see more of like private club in the sense of you could look this place up, like you could get a business address, you could get a phone number probably and things like that. And you could become like a private membership member to these clubs. So it was still kind of, it protected a sense of anonymity. It protected a sense of privacy. Um, it's but, also how a lot of clubs today right. can do the things they do is because if they are a public establishment, you, you can do the play that we do, but if you're private right. establishment, that's a different story. Right. But even that, even that depends on your location. Uh -huh. um, you know, the more metropolitan areas are where you're going to find clubs that you can go play at publicly. Right. Um, if you're in like the middle of the sticks, you're probably going to have to travel. Right. And, and that probably goes back to being... <laughs> We just took his bone. You remember Squeak Wubba? He says, I'm Squeaking Wubba now. Oh, he tackled her. 
So as Mark was saying, for if your location's in a little more conservative area or a little further out outside of a metropolitan area, it's probably even less socially acceptable in the mainstream to be a part of this community. And so therefore it is a little more hush hush um, than say like, you know, Manhattan or, you know, Los Angeles, New Orleans, these kind Chicago. of big, these big yeah. kind of rowdy cities sometimes, <laughs> you know, there's always kind of like a district that's a bit, you know, spicy. <laughs> That's a district. Um, Caitlin. Yes. I feel like we haven't heard from you yet. What was your first public experience? Did you go to a, like a play space? Did you go to an event that had a dungeon? Did you go, did you play privately first? Like what um, was the So the I, I started, the first really like experience with like S&M play I did was a private play partner. Um, who I had met online and, you know, we started kind of not really the dating thing, but like we'd go out to dinner, things like that, got acquainted with each other. And then, so, you know, I felt comfortable going to his house to try to explore these things. Um, That lasted maybe a few months. And then I didn't really do a lot after that. Um, I tried to go to a few munches, but it never really worked out. Um, I think I told a few of those stories in like previous episodes, but but, um, my first, experience with play I actually uh, went to one of our local dungeons for the first time and uh first time I had a dungeon I hadn't even been to much so I hadn't really bit, had exposure to the uh local community mm-hmm. and so it was I mean it was a play event it was one of their normal Saturday night play events um and I actually played for the first time my first time there so it was kind of a right off the deep end into the and what did, is public play? And how did that feel? Like, uh, now, did you go with that play partner, or you went solo no, and you I, picked up? You did pick up play. I went completely alone. Um, my dominant at the time was in another state. Okay. Um, he encouraged me to go, and he uh, sat on the phone with me for 20 minutes while I had a meltdown about how I didn't want to go inside. <laughs> did you uh, the parking lot? As I sat in the parking lot, because I, our do, local clubs are in warehouse settings. Okay, I feel and like so you, most dungeons do you, you do feel like you might get murdered in the parking lot i right. think partially by design um and just like so yeah right I, I, so I, it was so scary. scary and you know he was very encouraging because you know he uh, is part, is part of, of the uh community up in virginia and so he was kind of walking me through what to expect and different things and so i ended up going in um and i think i've told this, this story a few times in previous episodes as well but i met um uh uh, another female rope top who was around my same age. Right. A lot of people were like, no, she's great. I watched her play. She offered to try a tie on me. Right. And so it's kind of like an experimental thing. We didn't do what I would call a scene. Okay. But we did participate in okay. rope. She, she and, played. You did play. Yeah, okay. we did play. Um, how, how was that for you? I mean, how was, I mean, obviously was, you had a little mini meltdown. You were afraid to go in because you were by yourself. I mean, yeah, that's, that's completely scary. understandable. Um, how, how did that, how, what was different about playing publicly, even though it wasn't like, you know, maybe a full-blown scene, how was that different for you than the private play you'd done? Um, it was a bit more thrilling uh, for a few different reasons. Part of it, I think, was kind of the risk, okay. just because, you know, it is risky to play with someone you've never met before. Right, and people are going to see me. People and are, then people, people are going to know I'm into this me. shit. Well, not even that, but like, I am. Um, exhibitionist I do well I don't like attention I like attention when I draw it to myself so like attention like, on my terms on my terms I'm that's a cat. cat yeah that's the cat um, <laughs> and so it was kind of nice because you know we got done playing we looked up I mean it wasn't a super busy night there were maybe 10 other people in the club that night it was the size yeah and so um we got done and I am a giggle masso for those that don't know I do laugh quite a lot when people hurt me uh the whole family's got like the giggle brigade. The giggle brigade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we are. But we, so like, we got done, like, we kind of like looked up and was like, oh, everyone in the club's just like gathered around and watching us. I love us. that feeling. I, I was like, that feeling. at first I was a little embarrassed because, you know, I was nervous that my laughing was going to be taken the wrong way or it was yeah. going to be seen as too loud or something because, you know, there are, other pe- or something yeah, like that. there are other people playing in the area. It's not um, like shrieking. I mean, you do shriek, I guess that's a bad example. <laughs> um, but, you know, so at first I was like, oh no, 
I messed up. No one else is playing. Like, and then it was, and then after that, you know, a lot of people approached me and talked to me and it was a lot, they were a lot more friendly after that. Cause there was kind of a generational gap. Um, at right. that time, the club was mostly forties and above and I was a 20 year old. I feel like it kind of still is that. Yeah, but <laughs> it's, it's the same more, location. Yeah, it's, it's the same location I'm thinking about. Then, um, yeah, I, I had gone to there. I went there first on a Friday night because they do Feminine on Fridays. So yeah. That's when I'm going to go. <laughs> um, but it's definitely one of those things where um, I'm thinking back to, I'm trying to think back to, like, my very first public experience, like, years and years ago. And it all kind of blends together. But I, I remember being excited because, again, it was, like, kind of this, at the time I was on I was on the the bottom side of things because I was still earning my stripes so to speak and I remember being very excited about it because I wanted people to watch I wanted people to be like, look what I can take look mm-hmm. what I can handle I'm a bad bitch you know <laughs> that kind of thing but at the same time I didn't want to feel like ooh look at me look at me right so, you know it's, it's a fine line between enjoying that attention and like trying out of your way and trying to control the room if you command a room because it just happens naturally fantastic and those are fantastic moments people can you know vibe on the energy you're giving off and you you, we've been to dungeons where you're like that that pair or those people playing that's that's the shit right now i'm feeling that Mm -hmm. that's that's awesome i love that um so when that happens fantastic but the people that are like you know oh look at me um kind of throws off my vibe a little bit as well (laughs) Mark, do you remember your first public kind of experience, what it was like for you? I do, actually. So I had been doing research and on the interwebs and, like, starting to chat with people and meet people locally. And I had met a woman um, who was also a student at the time. And we were chatting and stuff. And she said, oh, well, this dungeon is going to have a, a women's weekend, Um, they used to do women's weekend every fifth weekend and it was, you know, there'd be a whole dungeon that was just chicks. (laughs) It was (laughs) awesome. Um, and they would do like female focused classes and things like that during the day and then play party at night. Um, it was actually a sleepover. Oh, nice. (laughs) Nice. It was super fun. I do a dungeon sleepover. (laughs) So I went, um, I went up and it was, I hadn't been to anything public, like, No munch, no nothing. And you went straight for the weekend, did you? I went straight for a women's weekend. Balls deep. I appreciate that. (laughs) With someone I had literally met once. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) Um, I drove myself because security. But it's important. uh, Yeah. Went up. Had an amazing time during the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Someone, uh, Master Talon happened to be there and nice. uh, they were teaching and it was really funny it was they're one of the very first people I met within the scene in person oh, nice. um and we're still friends to this day and they looked at me and they were like as I'm the one putting together the fuck saw right because other people couldn't figure it out and I was like I got this hold on and uh they asked me if I was a boy or a girl and I was like I'm just a girl because I am clueless. I have no idea what they're talking. Years right. later, I'm like, oh, oh, they saw it in me before I even knew it was a thing. They, <laughs> they saw it. They saw. Um, and then the play party that night was a typical Saturday night and lots of people. Well, I didn't know it was a typical Saturday night. Now I know it's a typical Saturday Right, right, right. But lots of people, lots of play going on and I'm just in like owl mode which is I just perch and like watch all the things head turning eyes big taking it in yeah um and I was amazed because there were people my size and bigger doing things that I had always had the like the thought weren't going to ever be available to me like suspension right I had never seen anyone bigger than like 150 pounds yeah he suspended so it was like oh well that's not going to be an option for me I still love rope it's so pretty but well all of a sudden I was like oh that person is definitely they can do it so can I and nobody's nobody was batting an eye yeah at them like 
Not at all. They were watching because they were enjoying it, it, not because they were being fucking judgmental about it. <laughs> right. It was great. Um, And so while I was sitting there, actually the owner of the club came over to me and was like, hey, are you okay? Because Did you get kind of wall flower in it? Oh, I'm literally just like sitting on the back of the couch perched like a fucking mm-hmm. owl. I'm <laughs> just like <laughs> eyes this big, like kid in the candy store overwhelmed. Um, but, like, in the best way possible, oh. like, the the world that I thought existed in my head actually exists, <laughs> and I'm welcome here. Fanta- a- what a novel, right. what a novel concept right. sometimes, though, right? Oh. Yeah, and he's like, oh, is there anything you're interested in? And I'm like, well, I'm yeah. interested in rope. <laughs> <All of this. laughs> he's like, okay. So he walks me over to um, one of the other individuals who runs runs that club and was like, hey, do you have time? She'd really like to get suspended. So you're like, uh, okay. Uh, uh, they they would. Put, <laughs> right? Yeah. They put me in a, a Superman tie and they have an electric winch. Mm-hmm. So I got to go much higher than you would normally do on like a static ring. Right. Mm-hmm. And they spun well, me around and I was flying and I was just was like, so much fun. Ah. Um and then I got ballsy later that night. And but then uh, she got ballsy. Oh, then. She went ballsy at that and she got ballsy. Right. Because then I went and uh, they needed, they were doing a demo on uh, electric play. Yeah. Nice. And you're and like, you know like, what? This could be fun. Oh, I'd like to see that. And then um, the same person who actually suspended me uh, whipped me with a cattle fence. Um, and you're like, wow, I'm so glad I made the right choice to come, come here. You're like, oh, I'm where I was meant to there, be. I, I, that sounds great. Which, by the way, getting hit with a uh, a cattle fence, like the wiring, yeah. because of the way that they're they're out, uh-huh. it only zaps you if both of them hit you at the same time. Yeah. You don't you don't actually know no. what you gotta get. It's like a no. surprise. Uh-huh. And honestly, we were like, he, he was like. I've already, I've always wanted to do this. And I was like, I'll volunteer. That sounds will do it. The fuck? I'm in. Let's go. And so uh, it was a really exciting experience because I didn't know. One, it hurts because it's a wire hitting you. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, yeah. It sporadically (laughs) shocks you. It was more, I I will clarify, it was more like a flogging than a whipping. But still. It was a lot, yeah. and it was great. By and the inauguration. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sink or swim, and I definitely swam. Yep. And, yeah, I've not looked back ever since. I was caned the first time I was public. I got, that mm-hmm. was my, that was my uh, first, my <laughs> public inauguration is I was caned all up and down my back and shoulders, and I was just like, mm-hmm. oh, like, I remember, like, hanging, but for you, yeah, but I'm not a masochist. <laughs> I, I remember, like, hanging on to, like, the arm post going, like, I I can do this. I can do this. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> I should clarify. That was the first time I got to it, got to go for pure enjoyment. Okay. I did work. I had done work as a top, as a dominant before, but mm. we didn't. It was a performance kind of thing. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Not a club thing, but yeah, that was my first time. I'm going to enjoy myself. Right. It's like work. That's fun. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Now, what about, um, I think you touched on it briefly in the beginning about kind of spaces that offer truly public events in the sense of like fetish parties and things like that. You know, we have a club here locally that used before COVID, nothing going on right now, but before COVID, there was like once a month or something like that. There'd be a circuit where you could go. Oh yeah. But it was a nightclub that had an upstairs area and uh, offered this, this play experience. So when we're talking about public spaces and dungeons, that's not the events we're talking about. Yes. Just to clarify, just for, for a vernacular for this episode. So um, those events are fine. They are what they are. Like, yeah. I don't mind going. I love people watching. Yeah, I love people have watching. Have a drink. I love I love getting dressed up. So it's an uh-huh. excuse to dress to the fucking nines, go out. You skip the line in the club because it's technically a private party, even though it's not because they let anybody in. Um, uh, and because you have to pay, you have to pay an additional cover to get upstairs. Right. No, but you don't pay, pay a regular cover, cover to get in the club. You go, well, you skip. Yeah. 
He's getting his d- weaver. Right. Special. <laughs> and you feel special because you just like walk past the line. You're like, you're oh, like, I'm, I'm here for upstairs. upstairs. And they're like, oh, right this way. And you're like, bah, suckers. No. I mean, <laughs> you pay when you get there, but it, you feel bougie for like three seconds. <laughs> As you're dragging your uh, play your about suitcase the suitcase full of shit. <laughs> yeah. And just, like the stairs. Crops and things are hanging oh, out. I didn't you got know there was an elevator. There's an oh, elevator? Yeah, there's an elevator. There was an elevator. Spot, though. I'd rather just drag everything up the three I mean, flights of stairs. I don't have to drag anything, but yes. <laughs> yeah. That particular uh, fetish party, I don't, I didn't, I don't usually play. I usually there to, I'll socialize. You know, not that you can hear anything, because it is like club loud music. Um, have a drink, dress up, hang out with some people, have a cigar on the pat, the, because they have a balcony mm-hmm. and overlook the kind of the Ebor party district yeah. and stuff like that. So that's why I go to that that particular event. I have played there, but with people that I know in advance, like we've done rope there as like part of a display or something like that, but. I uh, have never played at that party. I did get that was actually uh, my uh, first date with the previous drama of mine was meeting him at that party because it was an easy like I can just leave if I don't want to be here. Fair enough. And so fair enough. I uh, I used to play at that at those type of parties. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first started going to them, there weren't a lot of like outsiders coming up right. to the party. It was mostly just people who knew what were going on, and occasionally one or two people who. You know, saw, all the crazy people walking upstairs and were interested What's but like it wasn't super bad and then over the years it just unfortunately it took a real like downturn and I think that was like the organizers yeah. of the event not necessarily the organizers of the club right since those were two separate people like right exactly the club, yeah the club hosted it yeah but somebody else actually like supplied the dms and things like that and yeah. Are there DMs there? Uh, there used to be. Oh, they, quote unquote, but oh. yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because the night that I <laughs> went, the first date that I had like, there, okay. they got rope, had roped into DMing for rope. Oh. But it was, there's no like distinguish of who is or isn't. It's basically just some, they asked somebody to watch over something and like oh. step in. Which is why I say it was a change because back in the day, they had like a they proper had like a an staff. actual DM staff. Okay. Who wore actual like identifiable Secured, security shirt or something, you know? Yeah. That would that would make me more comfortable. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen uh, someone clearly marked. If I if I didn't, maybe I just didn't see them. But I don't know. No, by the time I was like, I'm done. I gave it a couple like I'd give it six months and I'd go back and try, and then they give it six months and go back and try, and by the end there just wasn't any security, and there was there was less um. I don't know the word for it. There were like, more gawkers, just, right? Like more vanilla gawkers coming like, ooh, we're going to go to a fetish party. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be here looking cute, but hi. Yeah. There was I'm less, not, like, uh, there was know, less uh, discretion on who came up to the party because they used to kind of, kind of tell people like, this is what you might expect up there and kind of determine whether or not they came up. Yeah. Um, and at, towards the end, like, People you just ten bucks or whatever you're getting up there, yeah. Yep, and like I really, I struggled because I had times where um, drunk spectators just were going around and like would almost hit me in the face <laughs> while I was suspending someone. Like yeah, that's why the and, play. That's why it's more of a, a a fetish viewing party for me. It's like any other. It's like a nightclub. Like I consider it that particular bit more of like a a night going to the nightclub in fetish gear. Like it's a fetish themed right. party almost, as opposed to like a a night to get you know shit done. But it used to be a place to actually go play, mm. and it kind of, it went downhill. And there's a lot of reasons. I know some of those reasons. I don't know all of them. Right. Um, but it became, in my opinion, it became an unsafe space. Right. And I just couldn't, I couldn't put myself in jeopardy and I didn't want to put anyone else at jeopardy. So I stopped going because unlike a private club where there is security at the door, there is security within the building. Mm -hmm. If somebody is getting out of hand, you can get a security person. You have a, you have have means of escalation and dealing with it. If they're being shitty, they'll get removed. 
Right. Um, but when you're, when you're doing a more like a public play as in a club night like that, where it's not a private club, it's just a club in the city club or a swingers club or something like that. Yeah. Um, you don't have as much like backup if something goes wrong. Yeah. And as a, a woman who generally goes by herself to these things, um, that's really important because not just in the space, but like the one in Ebor, that's yeah. a party district. And it's not necessarily the safest right. um, because drunks and assholes. Yeah. And, um, you know, even, even the nicer, more regulated private clubs, like I still got to get to the building. Right. right. But at least I know that if at a private club I'm having an issue Someone with security with. will come out and either walk me to my car or just stand there while they watch me get to my car safely. Right. Yeah. I don't have that at like the more public spaces. And so back in the day, 10 years ago, I probably would have said something different about that. But mm-hmm. it's as as things shift within the community, that's where I'm at. Yeah, and it, everyone's got risk profile of their yeah. own. You know what I mean? Just yeah. you know, just, I like to get dressed up and go, and that's it. Yeah. And you know, I know tons some of people, people who love to go and play there. That's the only place they to go play to play. There. And some people are, you know, more of the mind like, eh, I don't really think that's for me to play there, you know, and that kind of thing. So make your own judgments, you know. Um, always try it, I guess, if you want to try it. <laughs> um, not now, obviously. There's nothing going on with the pandemic. <laughs> right. <laughs> ah! I miss public spaces. (laughs) Like, I miss public as in, you know, like, private. I miss dungeons. I miss, like, I miss, like, going and having people watch us play. sessions. Yeah. Like, playing at my house is one thing, but it's just a different vibe. Mm -hmm. Right. I will play in my pajamas at my house, and I still feel like I'm a boss, but it's just a little, it's (laughs) different. It's a different vibe. It's a different vibe. (laughs) I see you in, like, one of your like really sexy pair of boots with like sweatpants rolled up over that. Hell like, yeah! Out, <laughs> and, like, got, like, badass boots and like and coffee. Pump- <laughs> and coffee. <laughs> I love it. All right, next time the onesie and the yes! and the ball busting boots. Yes, please. Oh my god, please. Co-topping scene yes, where please. we're both in onesies <laughs> and like shit kicker. Double onesies. Double onesies. Um, fantastic oh my gosh um but speaking of clothing speaking of clothing so for these let's go back to uh the, like the membership dungeons place we're calling them public spaces but now we're shifting away from the nightclub scene back to dungeons where you're playing private where public. there's other there's a semi-public i guess you could call that yeah, yeah. um private because when i think of when i think of like private places there's like a couple locations that come to mind but also more of like parties in people's homes and things like yeah. that um so back to like the public spaces dressing up or uh not dressing at all right so yeah. that's something that is unique to these membership places right these dungeons and things like that is most of them mm-hmm. are full nude in yeah. some cases it'll depend on the county that they're in right but yeah right. a lot of the ones in our area at least you can once well, you're yeah. behind we'll, the second we'll door. speak to ours because <laughs> we, we're living here um full nude once you're past the you know check-in desk (laughs) yeah um I have like a love-hate relationship with getting dressed for (laughs) clubs because Mm -hmm. I'm hyper self-conscious about my um body in clothing the way the clothes fit on you Mm -hmm. yeah but I know I'm gonna get naked like 30 seconds into this place. But for those 30 seconds, I want to feel perfect. Right? Like, 30 seconds in, I'm going to be pretty much naked because that's right. my MO. If I last longer than that, people are, sh- well, people used to be shocked. Right. Nowadays, not so much. Now it's the bras on. They're like, whoa, girl, right. whoa. <laughs> um, um, yeah, for me, I, um, I don't, I like, I like going because I like seeing other people 
confident in their bodies and I being naked. That. I love, I love people it. that just like whip shit off. I and was like, like, I have arrived. Right. I was like, I see that. I'm proud of you. And I love it. But for me personally, I've never gone full nude at a club. I always at least have panties on. Mm-hmm. Like I just, it's a personal thing. But even like when we play here That's because you home, got a wet ass pussy. That's why you got to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> got me leaking all over. Put a towel under her. Uh, She's oh. douchey. You got to put a towel under her. I always have to put a towel under me when I play. Cause I, get, yeah, because she'll squirt on you, too. I you squirt when I, yeah. like, when I hit that, like, level, I'll yeah. be like... Queen. And not a water fountain, <laughs> but... Uh, maybe maybe a mock and baby girl can teach you the secrets one day. <laughs> I don't know. Can that be taught? Uh, Probably. Some people say, yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, I've had people try, but... Mm, yeah. Mm. Hold on. I think... I've had a lot of people try. Were there guys or were they girls? Both. Okay. Mm, I question them. We will go back. We'll, we'll, we'll visit the, the learn to squirt. Um, so, but keeping the panties on, is that just a, that's just a personal it's preference? It's a personal preference, but I personally love like getting dressed up because I'm not super confident in my body when I'm naked. Right. Um, I, but it's kind of like Amok said, the love hate relationship. Cause it's, I don't want to be naked, but then I get self-conscious about how the clothes fit me, but I want to be super dressed up and like, I love getting as dressed up as I can. Right. Like that's, I think that's something I'm really missing is like getting that chance to kind of get dressed up and be seen. Cause that's right. a big thing for me as part of exhibitionism is I just want to be seen as being pretty. And How do you like perfect my outfit and... today? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Um, I used to also, so before my guys, mm-hmm. I didn't have any kind of uniform. So right. I got to dress a lot differently with a lot right, more yeah. variety than I do now, unless I ask permission. Um, but I'll say I do have less anxiety now because I have a uniform that I have. You, to, you know what you're going to wear. You know, that's how I felt when I was like a schoolgirl too, because I didn't have to wear what I was wearing at school. I was going <laughs> to be the uniform. I, didn't, I got no, no thoughts. No thoughts. Yeah. But I do miss getting to like dress up more in like – kind of what people think of when they think of a dungeon like thematically like dress up like that's yeah what I mean. love a good themed outfit <laughs> love that anything dramatic oh, yes yes more of that more of that and, and again that goes back my... to me being super dull in my everyday life so I like a little drama on the weekends <laughs> <laughs> I generally would do like corsets and mm-hmm. skirts particularly skirts that I could like hitch up in the front so I had yeah. like a full situation going on because right right Y'all know how much I love bustles. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, and I love me a good high low too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice high lows. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you know what they do like um in a dungeon where it's like the clothed dominant naked submissive. Yeah. I want to flip that. I want to flip that, which feels like I want to be butt naked and beat the shit out of him while he's got his clothes. <laughs> uh, can I be there to watch, please. Just, like, just, just for that. Just to be like, why not? What? Because people, you know, and I've, I've had I've had a few other dominants comment on my attire or sometimes lack thereof. Because sometimes I'll just play in sexy lingerie and high heels and no. I just feel amazing. Yeah. Because I know my butt wiggle is great when I'm striking on a flogger. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's the reason is. everyone's behind me and enjoying this. Um, <laughs> but I've had I've had a, a few people be like, oh, like, you know, you know, most dominants, like, you know, don't do that. I'm like, well. I'm not no stomach. I do, and I feel like more people do that than you think or you'd like to admit. Just because you don't want to do it doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, but no, I do want to. I want to flip that whole like clothes dominant naked submissive thing just once, just to just to, just to see what. I, I don't even know if I would like it. I probably hate it because I honestly hate being butt naked. I hate being totally totally nude. I'm like with you. I'm yeah. like at least give me the panties. Just the panties. At least give me the panties. I always have panties on when I'm topping in. Most of the time, I have a but, shirt on as well. Right. Like, I can be butt naked. I will go back and get my clothes and put right. them on to come top someone. Well, at least if, if I, I have, have a shirt on, then the tits aren't, like, you know, completely free willy. You know, they're <laughs> little, a little more contained. They have an assigned seat. Just They might not stay there, but they have an assigned seat. Exactly. Like, if I lean over, I'm not going to poke my the eyes out with a nipple just right. face left with the titty right incidentally that's true or i know that um uh, what, Matt, was that uh, really the first time you saw a play me you saw this? well i think i believe you had played with your kitten at the time prior to that it was a different different time because she wasn't with time. us that time mm. 
Okay, maybe that wasn't that was the first time I saw you play with a boy then. Maybe that's probably um, accurate. Because that's probably accurate. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was the first time I saw you like play play. Like rough play. And just before then, you had had a wrestling, a wrestling match, match on those mats with someone else in the local community, and you looked like you had a good time. Like it looked, it was a lot of energy. It was a draw. It was, it was, it was a lot of energy. It was fun, and that's when the boy was like, "Can we?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, he's <laughs> gonna make me roll." I thought you had played with him on the um, on one of the crosses before that. I think I don't. I think there was two separate nights. We played both nights. Okay. We played both nights, but I think the first night it was like, it was so busy. It was much busier the first night. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, we'd been waiting like maybe like already half an hour. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to be tired from uh, doing nothing. Uh, (laughs) Because like when you're just kind of waiting around, sometimes you're like getting tired waiting because you're there's so much stimulation going yeah. on that actually you're make, being made tired without actually doing something yeah. like that that's, well, why, exactly. that's actually why we didn't get to play the last fpe that actually happened we were supposed to play but oh they took, you went to bed i went to yeah she went to bed because we were waiting for you to get um furniture for your boy and then yeah i was done oh, she was waiting on me oh, oh. you didn't even show up in the dungeon you went to bed no you went to bed before then you asked if I wanted to play, and I said yes, and I checked back in, and you still hadn't gotten furniture with him, and then I inadvertently uh, disappeared. You inadvertently? No, you my, went to bed. My plan was to come back down, but it didn't happen. Best laid plans of mice and kittens, I guess. Not mice and men. But you were saying something a minute ago, though. Oh, well, that's so that's one of the things with when you're at a private club mm-hmm. that has events regularly. Right. Um a lot of times there's more opportunity and for clothing wise, always check if there's a theme going on that night. Cause you might want to dress up for it. Party. Mm-hmm. I do. Uh, but when you're at a, a private dungeon at like a conference, mm-hmm. it's, you know, that's the big time for all of these people who are out of town and aren't, you know, we're coming together. People tend to be a little more showy and, oh. Everybody Absolutely. wants to play. One of those people. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, and we get to play with people that we wouldn't normally get to play with because they're out of town or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. So it can be harder to find space at, like, a cons dungeon than it is True. when you go to a regular dungeon. Um, and Don't the other that. thing is the rules of those spaces are different than, right. than when you're working a full membership club. Yeah, it probably has to do with insurance and liability, like for the ho- for the spaces that are hosting it. Usually, it's a hotel. Yeah. So usually they have like. Ooh. Yeah, and often those spaces are not full nude, right. like where the private clubs sometimes can be. Right. Um. Also, at certain private clubs, I know that I've been to a couple. Um. That it's not only full nude, but it's full activity, like. Right. Like you, you can have sex. Can, you can have sex, you can do whatever. Penetrative play, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, whereas in other places, you can get naked and you can do a lot. Or you can penetrate in certain kinds of way, but not all of the kinds of way. Right. You and I are thinking the same thing right now. Because I'm like, that's like locally, um, in the Tampa, Orlando area, like, I can fist somebody's asshole, but they cannot lick a strap on if I am wearing it, even if I have clothes on. What? Yeah, I'm sure it's some weird legality thing, but so always double check the mm-hmm. rules in in reputable places. The rules will be posted, mm-hmm. and or someone will give you a rundown. Yes, that way you don't you know do something and you're like, oh, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Well, I I had the opportunity to know. So, but always check your rules because sometimes they're weird, and you don't don't argue with them either because there's reasons they're in place. You just have to accept it. Like you can lose your wristwatch on this person's anus, but don't bring the strap today. Okay, big deal. Whatever. I won't do that here. No problem. Yep. Yeah. Um, and kind of leading off of both what you said and kind of what I'm upset about um, checking for theme nights, there are also going to be some play spaces where there is a certain dress code you have to follow. Um, mm-hmm. People will talk about uh, dungeon blacks, which is basically you either have to be in fetish attire or in all black dress clothing. Um, and so like a black button down and black slacks, whereas like our clubs 
are a bit more free for all clothing wise come as you are and you can be in like jean shorts and a t-shirt right, right. so um always good to check ahead with that and know what you're getting into because the last thing you want is to finally get the courage to go and then be turned away at turned the door because you're not dressed correctly oh, you're like wow well, i just never come back then <laughs> <laughs> don't do that if you do fuck it up go try again yeah. try again you know learning experience yeah if there is if you're at a club and you're not sure if what you want to do is acceptable for the space generally the dm or the the dungeon monitor it's not a dungeon master well i want to say that every every time time. i'm always like kind of kind of technically kind of but not (laughs) monitor um master is a whole nother thing (laughs) um normally they'll be able to tell you if you go to them and we're like hey i'm interested in doing this thing is this okay? <laughs> and they'll let you know if it is or isn't in the space. Um, don't be afraid of your DMs. A lot of people are really intimidated by them right. because, you know, they're generally intimidating looking humans <laughs> for a reason. Um, but not all of them. Um, I'm actually a trained DM. I've done it for years, but don't, be scared to go up and ask them a question. Um, While lots of people are totally down to chat or whatever, if it's a period of time, let's say during the play or during like the um, cool down aftercare period where it's not really appropriate to go and bother the people, you can always ask a DM, hey, what is that toy that they're doing? Right. Why are, you know, why are they laughing like that? Don't right, what's going that on? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them will tell you some places their DMs are actually trained, like very experienced in particular types of play and are able to, while working, like as long as there are other DMs around to take some time to teach you a basic about something or let you experience yeah. something. Um, but not all places are like that. Yeah. Right? But your DMs are kind of, they're not only monitoring the space, but they're also hopefully knowledgeable about at least the basics and different kinds of play. Right. So. I agree. I agree. Use your resources. Yeah. And just ask. Just ask. (laughs) When in doubt, ask. (laughs) Ask. It's better to ask sometimes. You know, in this case, it's definitely better to ask permission. Permission in this case. Yes. (laughs) In our world, you know, normally I say, oh, ask for forgiveness, not permission. In this world, please ask for permission. Always. <laughs> even if even if you feel like you don't have to, please, please just do. Do that. That's my yeah. that's my final thought of the evening. <laughs> Always ask permission in this world. <laughs> um another thing to think about is what's happening in these private spaces are private actions. Yes. yes. Not yes. everybody who's you know, I'm very out. I'm very mm-hmm. public. But if I found somebody talking about something intimate, I would possibly be really uncomfortable with that. Right. They, they it's want not your business to tell. Right. I mean, I have people who do talk about my, like, suspensions and self-suspensions, things like that, like, openly. But I'm an open person. If it's something super intimate, uh, no. Um, right. But there are lots of people there who, for whatever reason, they might be in a position where they can't be outed. Right. And so if you're going, oh, yeah, I saw. Um, oh, and so. I saw Bob at the club the other night, blah, 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 to a coworker. Well, right. Bob might not be comfortable with that. You might put him at risk. You might yeah. put his job at risk. Um, you know, I have had situations where I have run into somebody that I know very well in the lifestyle at my job. And I'm like, oh, hey, I didn't know you worked here, too, because it's a really large organization. Right. And I'm like, mutually assured destruction. Keep your mouth shut. (laughs) Right. Um, I will say I did make in that instance, it was during a Christmas party and I accidentally was like, oh, hey, so and so. So good to see you. Um, Because they had made eye contact with me. Like, we had acknowledged each other's existence. Saw each other. You saw each other. We went up, and I definitely used the wrong name. Because their scene name is very, very close to a regular name. 
What could have been a real regular name. Right. Yeah. And so luckily I kind of mumbled it. <laughs> right. Because that would have been confusing. But, yeah. you know, we're, just, oh, hey, how are you doing? When they're, after that, when there were events and we saw each other, um, like, beforehand and be like oh are you going out this weekend I'm like oh yeah no totally I'm, mm, I'm not gonna be able to but we would do it very covertly we did not right. out each other to anyone because right. you don't know what those plans are just you know right you knew, but nobody else needed to know yeah I have been at like the gym I have been at the gym yeah. and made eye contact with someone and been like who oh no you don't know me I don't know you and then later get messaged by the bloke and be like what's were you at the gym? I was. Thanks that was for me. Not saying anything. Thanks. But I mean, I like I knew him personally, so it was it would have been fine. But it was also kind of like neither of us knew it would be like acceptable to like just approach each other and be like, hey, <laughs> in the vanilla world, you exist, and outside of the latex fantasy. Um. So, yeah. No. Don't out. Don't out people. Don't be. Don't be that guy. Don't be that yeah. person. Don't do that. You have thought, Caitlin? No. No, you lost it. No, you're just fidgety. Okay. No thoughts, head empty. No thoughts, head empty. Head <laughs> empty. Do we have any final thoughts on our experiences with public spaces, things we'd recommend, things we would not recommend? Um, David, that, do you have any of these things? I feel like I might, but they're not to the surface yet, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're waiting on She's having a We're very cool. quiet night. She has been very quiet tonight. What's wrong? You don't like public play? Yeah, I do like public play. I miss public play. Maybe okay. I'm just mourning. I'm mourning. I'm still mourning, mourning. public play. Well, because, like, I, for the past year before COVID, I really didn't get to play at all. And Wait, so we, when you could, you didn't get, get to. to. And then when you, right, when you could our, have, there was not a... Because uh, our first scene was slated for being a public play scene the weekend everything shut down. True story. So I, True maybe story. I'm just yeah. mourning the loss of time. Hoping it comes back at least sometime in the next five minutes. I do, I do miss public play. Um, what's the first thing you want to? What, what's the first kind of scene you want to have when public play is optional again? No, I don't know. Oh my god, I'm trying to talk you know softball you here. Play with? What? Do you know who you want to play with? Well, madam. <laughs> what, what, what would you like to do? We're both trying to give you a softball here, and you're like, I, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, M cat, don't fetch. <laughs> It's a yarn ball. It's got a lot of strings, and she's not catching all of them. String, string. We'll string her up. That's what we'll do. We'll string her up. We could turn you into pinata again. Yeah. yeah. Can you could be a very cute pinata. A mock was turned into a pinata. I want to be a pinata. We'll have candy. You hold candy. Yeah. We'll hit you with a stick until it falls. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> Mark, do you have any final thoughts in your head? Um, I miss the connection of the community. Mm-hmm. I miss being able to, even though like the year before the world shut down, I didn't go out often to on like a regular weekend basis mm-hmm. to any of the local establishments. Um, I still miss the camaraderie. I miss playing in public and having people watch and talk about it afterwards. Like, yeah. miss the energy. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, the energy. Yum, yum. Yeah. I miss playing with people like because I did do a small amount of pickup play and I liked being able to play with different people. And then I miss my regular play partners. Yeah. You know, most of them aren't local. So the time that we got to play together was at cons and was at, you know, if they came down for a dungeon night or something like that. And it was like a special occasion. Right. But, you know the world yes. so I miss all of those things I'm excited I'm excited to have them back however even though um I'm now vaccinated I'm not gonna I'm gonna wait I'm not I'm not one of those people that were like open right now do the things right now because even though I want to I know it's not safe mm-hmm. and I know that Having, you know, having cons right now is not safe. Having big play events is not safe. Um, I did go to like a small puppy night, but Mm -hmm. it was a puppy night at a bar and there was no play. 
Like right. it was just very social and it was outside and right. it was wear, wear your stuff and right. be in the headspace without the whole yeah. body contact bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that okay, so that finally like oh, triggered oh, brain back online. Oh, 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 all right, I'm ready. <laughs> Um, no, I think I think that's something to kind of go off of as a final point. When things do start to open back up, if you haven't been to a public space before, get yourself excited to have that experience. Like, it's going to be a different energy. You're almost not going to know what happened after your first night. I know after my first scene, I'm like, I feel hungover. Like, I didn't get drunk. There's no drinking. Like, right. But it was just all the different energies and stuff. And it was honestly a feeling I miss so much. And I'm excited for other people to get to experience that or you might hate it or you might hate it yeah because that could be the flip side and that's and that 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 shakes out for some people right like some people are like they love the idea of it and for some reason it's not for them and some people are like I don't love the idea of it I'm gonna try it no I still don't like it and if you're that person that is okay yes we as a group the three of us we love the public scenes we love the energy of other people we love being on display we i also just like shit. watching people and definitely you know, we're voyeur. big voyeurs and things like that <laughs> and if you are a voyeur you can certainly have your enjoyment and do the owl thing that amok was talking about and just observe you don't have to play mm-hmm. in a public space i recommend everybody if you're in a position where you can try to go to a public space at a um like a membership club or something like that try it once Try it. If you hate it or you're uncomfortable, you don't necessarily have to ever do it again. Yeah. But give it a shot. Give it a shot. If you're in if you're in the position to do that, I would I would recommend everybody give it a shot at least once. Those are my final thoughts. Yeah. Got it all. Anything else rocking around in there? I had it and then I lost it. And you lost it because she didn't hold her snoot. See? No, she didn't. Right, well, Sorry. We'll pick up your wine cup because we don't have any. We're gonna we're gonna do sound effects. We're gonna <laughs> clinkety. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>